Why don't you guys give him another round of applause? Give it up for our band. That was awesome. Welcome to City Life Church. We got a lot of stuff going on. You're gonna see us moving a lot of things around, but we have a special service plan for you guys today. My name is Evan. This is my co-host Frankie. Um, we are gonna be hosting the service this morning. We want to thank you for coming today. If this is your first time, your second time, your third time, we want to just let you know it is such an honor to have you here with us today. Um, so we're celebrating uh, Christmas, right? So Frankie, I have a question for you. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Christmas? You know, I think of snow, I think of reindeers, hot chocolate, just celebrating the family. What do you think of, Evan? Well, when I think of Christmas, I think about food. Can I get a can I get a, a witness or an amen? I think of food. Who too. thinks about food like me? I remember one Christmas though. Um, my brother and I, we we were at our grandparents' house, and we decided that we we're gonna uh, stay up and wait for Santa Claus to come and deliver the uh, Christmas trees, uh, the, the Christmas presents. Has anybody ever done that before? Am I the only one who tried to stay up and wait for Santa? Oh, I guess everybody's holy in here. Well, I used to believe in Santa until that night. And so what happened was, we, you know, we tried to stay up and wait for Santa Claus, but uh, I think at about midnight, I was probably like seven years old. Um, I was late, you know, like late. Yeah, I was really late. Uh, Santa hadn't came yet, so I decided he took too long, so I went to sleep and I woke up the next day and I was like, you know what, Santa's not real. But uh, that's my know. bad Christmas story. He, he might have came when you were sleeping, though, so you never know. Keep it going, there's some kids in the audience. Uh, what happened was my grandfather, you see, he, he was the one who ate the cookies and milk, so that, that's why my grandfather has one of those, you know, bellies like that. I got one of those too. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, Christmas uh, ultimately is about celebrating um, the arrival of Jesus. Um, um, some will call it Jesus' birthday, but we want to celebrate the arrival of our Savior um, coming to this world. So we want to do something special for anyone in here that has a birthday closest to December 25th. If you are a December baby, if you're a December baby, where are you at? You please raise your hand. If, you're, if you are born in December, raise your hand. Where are we at? Okay, I'm born in December, but all right, you're, raise your hand high. Are you the only one? All right, okay, okay. What? When is your birthday? December seven. When is your birthday? Wait, what? Oh, 25th. Wait, so. So uh, I guess she wins. So you don't look like Jesus, but I uh, yeah. Give it up for her. So that was a $50 gift card to Macaroni and Grill, so she's going to have uh, a lot of macaroni. Um, that's, I mean, that's like a, at least a month's worth of macaroni, $50. Um, so when you came in, you should have received a bulletin, and in your bulletin there's a, a white card in there. Um, I want you guys to take that white card out and just wave it at me. Okay, if you've never seen this before, then you probably never filled it out. Um, so, if you haven't seen it before, you probably filled it out, we already have your information, but if you're here for the first time, or you, you've um, only been with, here with us a few times, I would uh, ask you guys to just fill out that card. We want to send you a gift um, via email or via um, the mail. We want to uh, invite you back. We want to um, um, connect with you on a deeper level. So if you guys can go ahead and fill those out. Um, throughout this service, we'll collect them a little bit later on. On. Now, we have one more thing to do. Did you guys enjoy the music? Yeah. Do you guys want some more? Yeah. I want some more, and I'm not even in the audience. I'm in the back, and I want to hear some more. Um, we have a special um, presentation with our kids from our kids' ministry, our children from City Life. They're going to come up here, and they're going to help us sing a couple of Christmas songs. Would you guys like that? Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I don't know where they are. Oh, there they are. Can you guys give it up for our kids' ministry as they sing with us this morning? You guys ready to hear the kids sing? All right, and everyone give them a round of applause. They're gonna need a little bit of help, all right, guys? 
Give it up for the band. Yeah. yeah. How do you guys like Christmas songs? I love them. I like them too, but on Karen, what is it, Karen 101? No. Coast 103.5, they started like December 1st, and they play it all the way through December 31st. Anybody listen to Coast 103.5? This is like a free advertisement for Coast 103.5. After about December 14th, I'm kind of like, ah, let me change this channel. A little over it. A little over it, we got going on. Alright, so we all know we're celebrating Christmas. It's Christmas. Christmas is coming up this week. But I have a question for you, Frankie. Yeah. What holiday comes directly after Christmas? Uh, that's Boxing Day on December 26th. I was thinking more uh, like New Year's. Uh, yeah, that's that's a big one. That's a big one. There's also there's also Kwanzaa. I, mean, Kwan I missed that one too. I, mean, put I, it on that I don't think anybody here celebrates Kwanzaa. But uh, anyway, um, yes, New Year's. Um, and we want to celebrate next Sunday, kind of an end of the year, an end of the year service. Oh, by the way, you guys can have a seat. I'm sorry. Um, I was waiting uh, to see if any of you guys would kind of just sit down by yourselves, but that didn't happen. So uh, you may be seated. So we're going to have an end of the year type of service next week, next Sunday. And we're going to kind of have a recap video. We're going to be looking at some things that we did this year. Um, we're going to be... Um, Having communion, communion, we're going to be writing letters to God where we, we write a letter to the Lord and um, a few months later we mail that letter back to you. Yeah, it's um, awesome when you get the it. New Year and it's also, it's very fun. What I like to do is I like to put money in it, you know what I mean? And, and um, yeah, I probably actually. shouldn't say that. <laughs> but one time, I put some money in there and three months later, it was still in there when I got the letter. And I had forgot that I put money in there and I was like, hey, I got paid. It was a little surprise you got right there. Yeah, it was pretty nice. It was cool. Uh, so we're going to be doing that next week. Um, but last week, what we did was we had this service where we focused on um, giving financially. Um, and we called it Seeds of Life. And what we did was, we the concept was that we would plant seeds of life into our city by, by giving. And what happened was, a lot of you guys gave very generously and we were able to raise $5,000 to yeah. help out our church and our community. What, what did that money help us do? That money goes to helping us uh, resource our kids. It helps us uh, partner with uh, partners around the city just for those that serve all around and just to be able to help them out. And just various things just to, to be able to help the, the church. And, why don't we give a round of applause for everybody that's so generous and giving you? Yes. So if you want to give, if you want to help, I mean, you didn't get, you didn't have the chance to do it last week. You, you do have the chance to do it today at the end of our service. So feel free to do so in the lobby, and you'll hear some more information about that um, as this service concludes. All right. So now. The moment, it's the moment we've all been waiting, waiting for, it, right? Um, we've prepared to you, uh, prepared for you guys today a drama. Um, how many of you guys have ever had questions uh, about God and doubts about Jesus, and maybe you wondered, oh, is he even real? Like sometimes, like I'm not gonna lie, like as a Christian, I was like, okay, Jesus, okay, he he walked on this earth, but sometimes I'm like, did he really walk on this earth? Like was he is he was he really real? I'm pretty sure um, you guys have all had those types of questions. And um, that's what this drama is about, in a sense. Um, kind of asking, why did Jesus come? Why does he love us so much? So please enjoy, as we present to you today, the mystery. Huh, 
Anywho. What, what's this child? How is this child any different from any of us? I don't, I don't get it. Mm. If Jesus was the Son of God, why did he come down in a form of a baby? Ha! I knew it! I wasn't crazy. You guys did move. Despite what my psychiatrist said, I am not crazy. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on here? Isn't it beautiful? What? The nativity scene? No, my dress. Of course, the nativity scene. Silly. What is this all about? This is all about Jesus. The most important thing about Christmas is the gift. The gift from God. Jesus. Is any of this sinking in? Mm, no, not really. I mean, how can a person be a gift? I, I, I don't get it. I, I'm completely confused. Uh, let me explain. Oh, be quiet, Frank. <laughs> this is what Christmas is all about. Jesus' birthday party. Okay, okay. Let me explain. Many people think that Christmas is just about the gifts. Like you? <clears throat> but it's really about Jesus, our, the Savior of the world. Savior of the world? Yes. To save us from what? And why? I think it's so beautiful that God came to this world to save us. Isn't he precious? Oh, he reminds me of a little bundle of joy at home. Oh my God, our baby. Frank, what time is it? Little late. The babysitter. Our replacements were supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. We gotta go. Oh. Now. Oh. Anywho, you were explaining. For God so loved the world. Frank. Oh! Oh, I gotta go. I'm so sorry. I gotta go. Wait. Oh, read John 3.16. Wait, is that in the Bible or something? You guys can't just leave? Well, I guess you can. I don't get it. Baby Jesus? Why did you come here in the first place? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not Mary and Joseph, sorry. <laughs> Whatever.
I'm supposed to have it all together first? To get to know God? How's he even going to relate to us? Uh, and if this is the time where we're supposed to celebrate him being close to us, why do I feel like he's so far away? Did you make this? <laughs> uh, well, I guess it does kind of sound like me. Gotta love them cheesy church signs. <laughs> Wait a minute. You calling me cheesy? Me? Are you serious, really? Never. Okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand what's so funny. Why not? Why not? Well, if this is the time where God is supposed to, we're supposed to celebrate God coming down to earth, being with us, why do I feel like he's so far away? And I feel like he's never done anything for me. Whoa, 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 whoa are, are you sure about that? Maybe we should talk about this. Well, I do have a lot of questions, but I suppose you have all the answers, right? <laughs> oh, wait a second. No, we don't have all the answers. Well, first off, we do go to church. Second, we do know the Bible. And third, we do love Jesus. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, we go to a church not too far from here. <laughs> but trust me, we had nothing to do with this sign. <laughs> so you, feel, you said that you feel like God's not near, like he's far away or something? Well, yeah. I mean, just look at the world. It's so messed up. God can't be with us. You know what? I used to feel the same way. I felt that because I was such a messed up person, am <laughs> such a messed up person, God couldn't love me. But that was just a myth. In reality, Jesus came to save everyone from his or her mm -hmm. sins. Good people, bad people, all people. Why? Because he loves us. Well, if he loves us so much, why does he make it so complicated to get to know him? Well, oh, I see where you're getting at. Well, look, hey, we were on our way to go grab some coffee. Why don't you come along with us? We'd love to answer more of your questions. Yeah, do you have an hour? I don't know, guys. I just barely make you guys. <laughs> <laughs> True, True. Yeah. but hey, we're buying. Well, if it's on you guys, sure, why not? Let's go for it. All right. Hey, that sounds awesome. Oh, by the way, about your question. You know, Jesus, he's like a, a real gentleman. He doesn't force himself to be upon us. He wants us to experience himself and discover himself, ourselves. You know, it's just like for you, me, or anybody else that you see. Yeah. That's what I mean by he's a true gentleman. He doesn't force himself into a relationship with us. Mm. I see. Well, let's go get that coffee before you change your mind. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's go.
Hey, so how does it look? A little blurry, but nice. <laughs> it took me a while to hit it up, but you know, yeah. I did it. Working on it all last night. Well, everything. Oh, wow. Hey, so I overheard you uh, a couple hours ago that uh, you had questions about Jesus. Did you come to any conclusions? Well, I know that he came down to this earth to save the world and that he apparently wants us to know him. But no, I really haven't come to any conclusion. I'm still confused. I have no idea why he came in the first place. Well, that's pretty easy to answer. You know, it's love. God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on that cross 2,000 years ago for us. He suffered the same afflictions that we suffer right now. You know, when we feel lonely, you know, he felt alone too. He was cherished, he was celebrated. But through all those things that happened to him, he never sinned. And I know sometimes we go through a lot of things and, and we don't know where to go. But he's there for us. I feel like you have to have it all together first. <laughs> he never got along with people that, that had it all together. But that's a whole different story. I know that he loves us imperfect people, but I just don't see how he can love me, especially me. Well, he can be imperfect and he'll still love you. You know, a couple years back, you know, I was an alcoholic and uh, I was abusive to my kids and my wife. And uh, a couple years back also, I, I went and stole from a liquor store. Hours later, I got caught. And through all that, um, I found Jesus. Well, as a matter of fact, he found me. And uh, I can't thank him much for that, yeah. Wow. That, that's an incredible story. That's amazing. Huh. But I mean, I'm that walking testimony right now, you know. There's a service actually going on later on today if you would like to come. You know, I haven't been to church in a long time. That's I mean, bad. can I even go in dressed like this? Yeah, come as you are. Sure, let's go.
time we've been able to spend together today. And uh, uh, for, finally, uh, for, for those of you who are here for the very first time with us, it is a privilege and honor to have you with us. Uh, my name is Jeff, and uh, uh, one of the pastors here that gets to lead uh, this incredible church. And uh, for the first time, we've been here at this school meeting for three and a half years. For the first time this year, we finally got to pull out the grand piano. I said, please, I said to the team, let me play. And I so wanted to play that. And uh, they had it out of tune for about two years. And so we were able to pull it out this year and, and use it. Thank you for coming and, and being with us today and uh, just uh, and enjoying this with us. You know... This concept of mystery is, is something that is so uh, important to us because there's a lot of questions that surround God, who He is, what He came to do. And, um, and the longer I live, the more I realize that the less amount of answers I have to all of the questions. There's a whole lot of questions and, and we don't have all of the answers. We have some answers, but we don't have all of them. And uh, the, the reality of a God who came down to this earth in human form and and, and came as a, just a baby and, and, and experienced all of the, of the craziness of what that was like. And, and we talked a bit about that today. And then the, the reality of people that sometimes believe so many things that are wrong about God, myths about God. I'm also making a list and checking it twice. Anybody ever seen that before? Um, I've seen it. <laughs> that is not the God that I know. So many times there's myths that surround who Jesus is and what he came to do. And then there's the reality of who he is and what he actually accomplished. A man of legend, a person who was real and, and came and, and not only came as a baby, but gave his life and, and rose from the dead. But at the end of it all, we still have this little bit of mystery, this question that we're asking, which is, why did he do all of this? Well, why did He come to earth and, and, and do these things? Why would God Himself come in this form? You know, it actually says uh, uh, one guy who wrote various letters to different churches. His name was Paul. And uh, he says these words. It's found in the book of Philippians. He wrote to uh, a church in the city of Philippi. And in chapter 2 of this book, verses 5 to 11, we're going to uh, put these up on the screen right here. And notice what he says. <clears throat> he's talking to this church. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> and he's uh, trying to get this church to take on the same attitude as Jesus had. And so he says this. You, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. But here's where I want to focus on it, starting in verse 6. He says this. Though he was God... He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to, meaning he, he, he was God, but, but he didn't feel the need to have to stay there in that position, in that place. He, he didn't cling to that. Verse 7 says the following. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, it goes on to say, verse 8, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name which is above all other names. That at that name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue will confess, as it goes on to say, in every place, heaven, on earth, under the earth, in every location, Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, that is the result, that, that, that God's name would be, would be honored, that He Himself would be honored. But, but the way we get to that place is the fact that this God decided to give up all of His privileges and all that He had and to come to this earth as a baby and to live life as a servant and then at the end of it all to give His life on the cross dying for us and then three days later raising or rising from the dead. But we still are left with this question, why in the world did God do all of this? Describes it, Paul describes it perfectly, what he did. But why? And uh, I'm left with going back to the most simple verse um, that is probably the most famous verse um, in the Bible that, that people know. It's one I talked about last week. And on your way out, if you want to hear a little bit more of a detailed message on this verse, 
um, you can go and grab a CD outside, um, and we'll have it on our website too. But but this verse, John 3.16, John 3.16, which simply says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. Jesus decided to come to earth. God the Father sent Him so that you could have life. So that we could experience life. The, the reality is that we go through our days so often and we get focused on so many things and we go through just the, 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 the kind of just the, the daily routine of life and we go to work and we wake up and we go to bed and we eat some food and we deal with finances and how many love dealing with finances? Anybody here? <laughs> yeah, very few. And, uh, and we go through just all these normal things of life and, and, and there comes a certain point where I'm sure you have asked the question just like I've asked and we go, is there more than just this? routine? Is there something beyond just the day-to-day -day grind of all that we go through? And the answer to that is yes. And that is what Jesus came to give to us. That's why He came in the form of a baby, so He could relate to life as you have lived it. That's why He, even though there's tons of myths that surround Jesus, and, and some have thought, well, why doesn't Jesus, as we talked about in, this, in these skits, why doesn't Jesus just come and, and make Himself real and let everybody know, y'all are wrong about me? And I just said, y'all, that's kind of weird. We're in L.A. And I grew up in L.A., so I don't know why I'm saying that, but I said it. Um, and, 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 and why doesn't He come and just make it clear, this is who I am and what you believe about me is wrong? I believe simply that Jesus came so that way he could relate to our pain and we know that he relates to us in the midst of it. But hear me on this. And he doesn't come and answer all of the questions because what he wants from us is to enter into a relationship of discovery with him. Because God is not interested in us having all the answers, knowing all the answers. He is interested in us knowing him because he is the source of life. The questions won't give you life. You can answer all the questions and still live the same routines of life over and over and over again. And nothing ever changes. But if you come into contact with Jesus, then you experience life as it was meant to be lived. Life to the fullest. Life to the greatest. And outside of Him, there is no life like the life that He can offer. And there's been tons of people that have walked this planet, that have said a lot of good things about life. Well, you know, don't lie and, and do these things and do these other things. But only Jesus is the one that claimed that being God Himself, He gave it all up to come here as a baby. And being God Himself, He went all the way to death 33 years later. And being God Himself, He's the only one who has risen from the dead and 2,000 years later is still alive today. And because of that, He is able to give you and me life. All you have to do is reach out to accept it, to receive it. And so I want to thank you, because some of you um, have come here uh, for the very first time. You're our guest, and, and we're so honored that you've come to experience the life of Jesus with us. And uh, some of you have been here a hundred times. And, uh, and we get to celebrate together the simple fact that God is here with us. And so I want to thank you for coming. And uh, I hope, and we're not done yet, but I hope that you will come back again and, and, and be our guest here at City Life. And, and that's why we are named this, is because we believe that God is a God of life. So thank you so much for joining. I have a question. What in have a question. the world? Uh, security? Uh, well, no, we don't have security late, at this church. Um, it's too late. Okay, what, what is going on? Okay, so today I went around and asked a bunch of Christians about any of Christmas and all that. Yeah. Uh, so I learned it was about Jesus. He came down to this earth as a baby, took human form. Yep. He was crucified for our sins yep. so that we could go to heaven. And he simply did all this because he loved us. Is that, is that about right? Yeah, but what I'm surprised about is you learned all of that in one day. Yeah. You, you already know more about the Bible than some other people I know. I mean, that's, that's right. pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you really are looking for God, aren't you? 
I, I guess. But my question is, why does he love us so much? Hmm. That's a great question. Why does he love us so much? And you know what? That's a question that on this side of heaven, I'll never be able to answer. Because there's no reason for him to love us as, as much as he does. There's no reason for him to have done all that he has except for the simple fact that that is who he is and that is what he does. Uh, but are we deserving of it? Absolutely not. He doesn't love us because we deserve anything. And so there is no good answer to the question of why he does it. But you know what? <laughs> I, I, something I know about life is, is if somebody offers me a gift, I can ask, why are you giving me this gift? And they'll be like, because I, I want to do this. Yeah, but I need to understand the reason why you're doing this for me. And finally, they'll just say, forget it. If you don't want it, just tell me. And so there has to come a certain point where maybe I can't answer the question why, but I simply say yes to the gift that is being offered. And, um, and that's a gift, that gift of life, that gift of love that he has for us. And so, uh, listen, I'm glad you've learned about Jesus. And I'm glad that you've had this experience and, and talked to a few people and, and come to know um, a little bit more about Him. But you know what? My, my question to you is, you know, it's one thing to know about Jesus, to have information just about Him. Um, it's another thing to know Him personally, to actually have a relationship with Him. So to not just know about Him, but to know Him. What do you think about that? When you put it that way, no, I, I don't think I know him in that way. Well, he already knows who you are. And he would love for you to know him too. And so uh, I'm going to give you this offer, and I'm going to give it to everybody else here in a minute, that you connect with Jesus in relationship so you can know him personally. And so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and uh, uh, talk to you and uh, take care of you, all right? Thank you. Yeah. Why don't you give them a pause for how great they did actually. That's what's important. Not to just know about Jesus, man. I, I, I've met tons of people that have, that have experienced learning about God. And they could quote many of the same verses I quoted. But, and they could talk a lot about history and the Bible and all these amazing things. But at the end of the day... Jesus is not interested in you simply knowing about Him. He is interested in you knowing Him. There's a difference between a gift that you see and the gift that you experience. There's a difference between... Um, and in fact, yesterday we did kind of a pre-Christmas uh, thing with, with some members of uh, my wife's family because some of them are going out of town for Christmas. And so our kids already got some gifts. How many love an early Christmas? Anybody here? And, uh, and sure enough, man, they, they got their gifts. And, and, but it's not enough for my kids to just stare at the box and be like, oh, that's interesting. Look at what's inside of the box. Oh, yeah, that, that looks kind of nice. That, that's really... No, no, that doesn't make any sense. They grab the box and they rip it apart. And if it's a doll, you know, with all those little ties on it, you know what I'm talking about, right? They're like impossible to get off of the off the cart where they come attached to. And, you know, one of my daughters, she grabs scissors and starts like tearing it all apart. Like, I want this doll, right? And uh, because at the end of the day, it's one thing to be able to examine it, to see it. It's another thing to play with a gift, to experience it. And it's one thing to be able to simply examine God and, and know stuff about Him. It's another thing entirely different to know Him, to experience Him, to experience the life that He offers to us. And so I'm going to ask you to do something real simple today. I'm not going to embarrass any person here, uh, but I'm going to just ask you, if you would for a moment, uh, close your eyes. I would like to pray, and I just want to give a moment of privacy to everybody. Uh, closing the eyes is not anything religious, but just to give privacy to everybody, because I'm going to have a pretty important question in, in just a moment. Let me pray. Jesus, thank you so much for these moments that that we have been able to share here together today at City Life. Thank you for everybody who's uh, stepped foot uh, through our doors today uh, to experience the life of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would, by your grace, meet each and every person where they are at, that you would do something 
great inside of them, that they would experience your life. And with your eyes closed for just a moment, I want you to listen to this poem that was written by uh, George Williams, one of the members of our church. And uh, I want you to hear this and just think on these words. It says the following, At Christmas, may you find Jesus to be the man who can relate to every sorrow that you feel, who gave his life away for you to give you something real. May the myth about a distant God, uncaring and unmoved, be melted as you realize he came and died for you. May you find Christ legendary. All his promises are true. He can wash away your sin and do amazing things in you. So the answer to the mystery and why he came to earth, while we were dead in sin, he died to give us second birth. He came to give us life and peace and hope and grace to grow. He did all this for us, you see, because he loves us so. If you have a desire to connect to the life that Jesus has to offer you, would you do something real simple? All lives are closed, so nobody's going to be embarrassed here. Would you raise up a hand and just say, I want the life of Jesus inside of me. And if that's you, I just want to bless your life. Thank you for raising your hand. Go ahead and raise a hand. Thank you for raising your hand today. Thank you for raising your hand. Again, I will not embarrass anybody. Thank you for raising it. Thank you for raising it. Thank you at the back for raising it. There's hands being raised all over here. Thank you so much for raising your hands. May today be a day where you experience the very presence of Jesus, experience his life in a new and fresh way, and may his life fill you up more than ever before. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Can we give an applause to God? He is so, so, so good.